Hi everyone, my name is Denise Sanquist. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Scapa, the AI social tech company. Uh, today, I'm standing in front of you because I will share a bit about my entrepreneurial journey, uh, a little bit about myself and what has led me to where I am today. So I will share with you the hustling, uh, the belief in yourself that they believe that you have to have if you're going to embark on an entrepreneurial journey uh, about never going up and just continue doing what you love, simply. I was born as Chen Tang Hung in uh, Hanoi in Vietnam in 1991. So this year I am 32 years old. Uh, when I was three weeks old, I was adopted to Sweden as a baby and I grew up in a completely Swedish family. Um, I wouldn't say that being Asian was ever something that made me feel really different in a bad way. So uh, my parents always taught me to feel very proud of my Vietnamese heritage. Um, they told me a lot about um, how Vietnam was when they were there, how nice people were, how helpful they were. And I always grew up with this identity about that being different, not like everyone else, that is good. And I always had this curiosity and love for Vietnam. Um, I would say that something that really shaped me uh, a lot and also changed me uh, was something that happened when I was nine years old. And that is when my mom passed away when I was nine in cancer. Um, so I think that it's difficult to completely describe the feelings that you have when something like that happens. But for me, it was, and until this day, it is definitely the hardest thing I have ever uh, been through. And um, except for making me a lot stronger, I also realized that actually life can end anytime. We don't know exactly how much time we have on this earth and nothing is fair. And in that way, I actually became more independent but also stronger in the sense that I decided that I wanted to live my life to the fullest. I wanted to take the chances that I was given and I also understood that I am myself responsible for creating the chances in my life. So uh, growing up, uh, I always been quite a high achiever. I didn't really have a lot of pressure from home uh, in terms of having good grades, uh, but I always like to really push myself and really just go for it, whatever it might would be. Uh, initially, I wanted to create, um, I wanted to become a doctor because I wanted to find a cure to cancer. And later, I thought that becoming a diplomat would be an even better way for me to sort of change the world. Um, so um, that led me to actually doing this military service as military interpreter and interrogator in Russian when I was 19. So it's basically a former uh, elite spy school, so to say. Uh, you learn Russian in one year and then you also learn interrogation techniques. So this was something I did when I was 19. A lot of pressure during that time. 600 new words in Russian every week, uh, new grammar, and every Friday we had eliminating exams. So you had to score an average 97%, if not you were kicked out. <laughs> um, so I would say that that was definitely something also very hard. Uh, I learned a lot about self-discipline, uh, inner motivation, and I think that since I was able to graduate from there without being kicked out, it also led me to feel a lot of confidence. And I think that this is something I want to share with all of you, that confidence is not something that I personally believe that we are born with, but that is something that is created simply uh, during our life. And you can create confidence by actually putting yourself in different difficult new environments and then you do your best and you try to simply succeed. And I think that since this is Asian Hustle Network, um, just the fact that you need to have the confidence to actually put yourself in a situation and actually give yourself the opportunity to do it. And I think that if I would have thought about that, oh, most people who do this military service, all of them are Swedish, uh, they're mostly guys, uh, they are like taller and bigger than me because you start with basic military training. Um, maybe I would have felt too afraid to actually try. 
But I think that, um, once again, I never saw uh, my gender or being Asian as something, as something negative, but I always saw the positivity in that and actually how you can, if you have the right confidence, how you can own it, your differences, and then just standing out even stronger and making yourself even stronger. Just a little bit what shaped me uh, was that I was 22 years old uh, in Moscow, and that was the exact same age as my Vietnamese mom was when she gave birth to me. And I always had this interest for Vietnam, and I thought that I've never been to Vietnam, it's maybe time to go, and also where do I get certain things from. So I decided to uh, backpack in Vietnam. I came to the country uh, in 2013. This was the first time I was in Vietnam ever. And this was a time when I really tried to find birth parents as well, except for just backpacking. And I think that um, I came to the hospital where I was born. I asked, uh, do you have any information? And the only information I had was my Vietnamese mother's uh, name. Her last name is Nguyen, which is a very typical uh, Vietnamese name, as uh, some of you probably know. And I know that she was about 22 when she gave birth to me. And I know that she studied finance at university and that she was from Ha San Dinh province uh, outside of Hanoi. And I think that um, a lot of people told me back then that it's impossible. We don't have any information here at the hospital. It's going to be extremely difficult for you to find her. Um, probably you will, maybe, you will maybe never find her. But if you anyway want to have the chance to find birth parents, you should stay in Vietnam for a longer time. I lived a bit in Vietnam as well, always trying to find birth parents and never really succeeding. But that was sort of, I learned a lot of other things like during that time, uh, I got many amazing friends. Uh, I got to discover my birth country and I got to understand a completely new culture. And during that time, I was encouraged that uh, I should post on Facebook that I was looking for my birth parents. And I thought that I had been uh, trying and trying and trying uh, for about three years uh, without any results. And well, why not try this as well? Just go for it. And um, I posted in the beginning of December in 2016. And 24 hours after I posted, my post had been shared by thousands of people. 48 hours later, I was in the evening news. And then more hours later, uh, the biggest uh, newspapers um, had picked up my story and it just spread over whole Vietnam. And this is all thanks to the help of hundreds of thousands of strangers that really cared about connecting me with my birth parents. So against all odds, I was able to find my Vietnamese mother uh, one day before Christmas in 2016. So she read about me in one of the biggest newspapers here in Vietnam. And uh, then we celebrated Christmas together and New Year's. And back then I couldn't speak um, any Vietnamese. Uh, so we had a friend translating, but Moving forward to today, we have really good contact. She helped me even to start the company here in Vietnam. And in my case, it's a very sunshine story in the way that she actually never wanted to give me away for adoption. She always wanted to find me. And for me, it was always like an extra thing in my life that I was curious about where I got certain things from. And I thought that maybe I could help financially, if, if anything. And um, yeah, that was a dream coming true from my end and uh, definitely for her as well. And <laughs> I think when something like that happens, you feel an extreme gratitude. And I think that a lot of people told me that it's impossible, you're never going to find her. And was it easy? No, maybe not super easy, but I really wanted something. I really wanted to find her tried and tried and tried and tried. And then I was lucky enough. Sometimes you need, or often you need a lot of luck to actually be able to succeed. So it's not always you know, dependent on only yourself. But what is dependent on yourself is that you never give up and you keep trying. And some things I felt after that, leading me towards why I decided to come to Vietnam. Um, and when I started at the Stockholm School of Economics in 2015, 
I was much older than the average um, bachelor student. I had five uh, gap years, so to say, uh, after high school until I started university. And um, this was definitely something that made me uh, stand out. So I was quite late in that sense. But also by choosing my own path and really having gone for it and done what I really wanted during these years before that, I was also more confident in myself. Confident in what I liked, uh, didn't like, and also I understood uh, more about what direction I wanted to go to. Um, so studying at the Stockholm School of Economics, I did different internships. I think that's exactly what you should do uh, in life if you can. Try what you like, try what you don't like. It's all about trying, trying, trying. And then you eventually succeed or you find something that you really, really like. Uh, I had internships at Goldman Sachs in London, investment banking. I had an internship at a company called Oriflame in Tunisia. And this led me also to have an internship in Vietnam in 2016. And now we get closer to why I decided to start my career in Vietnam and create Scapa. Um, so during that time, I had an internship at an e-commerce startup. And I was here in Ho Chi Minh City. And it was a very interesting uh, time to simply work with people my age uh, in Vietnam and understand more about the new industry. I've always been very interested to do something for Vietnam, in Vietnam. And I felt an extreme gratitude to all people that helped me to find her. You are given a lot of chances, but then it's really up to you to jump on them, believe in yourself, and just take them. And I think that confidence, I would say, is something that uh, I would encourage all of you to try to summon and try to get. And you can just get that with more experience. So confidence in believing in yourself, taking the chances, because if you don't believe in yourself, who else is going to believe in you? Maybe today is the last day of our lives, we don't know. But what we anyway can promise ourselves is to do our best and to enjoy the ride and simply give us the chances to just go for it, believe that we can do it, because if you never start, you already fail. So uh, thank you everyone so much for this time and um, for having the opportunity to share a bit about my journey. Uh, my life journey uh, leading me as an adopted child, uh, as a baby growing up in Sweden, to coming back to Vietnam and actually starting my own uh, company here. Trying to change the world in the way that I believe is important and helping people to create more meaningful connections. Thank you so much. Chào mọi người, à, tôi là Adele Doãn Tôi nghĩ là tôi sẽ bắt đầu cái bài chia sẻ hôm nay về câu chuyện của chính mình à, Một đứa trẻ đã thoát ra khỏi cái lũy tre làng như thế nào Thì Tôi sinh ra trong một à, làng quê nhỏ bé ở một cái tỉnh lẻ ở Việt Nam là huyện Nam Sách, tỉnh Hải Dương